Yeah. When you pair a steak and the and the and a grilled pineapple, the balance of those two flavors, it's like an orgasm. <laughs> it takes you to a new world. Like I remember, like trying it for the first time, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I just kept telling myself, repeating these words, you're a warrior. You're an absolute warrior, Tim. Kind of like telepathically trying to communicate with you. I got, I got kicked out of a lot of shopping centers because we'd stand at the top of like where there's, um, where you can see in between each of the levels, like a little, um, and just, just shoot at people from different levels. And they can't really do anything because we're like two levels above. You wouldn't know where it's I'm coming just from. laughing at them. <laughs> yeah. All right, welcome back to the No Limit Boxing Podcast. We are back on Australian soil and it feels good to be home. We're joined by a very special guest today, Nikita Zhu, fresh off a, uh, a nice little trip to the US. He's got a fight coming up on April 24th. Nikita, pleasure to have you here. It's finally good to be here as well. We haven't been able to track you down because you've been traveling everywhere between training camps and the time spent in Vegas. How was your time in Vegas? It was good, spent four weeks there. I spent the large chunk of my training camp doing sparring out there and getting some valuable experience. Sparring a lot of new different styles, styles that we don't really see in Australia, the kind of Philly shell style. So I really got to increase my IQ in the sport. What is, um, what's the sparring like over there? Um, How much does it differ to here? It's more, it's what well, I found pretty interesting. I was sparring this one guy, I forgot his name, but during the sparring, he'd be talking to his coach like he's having a, just a random conversation, like at a coffee shop. <laughs> and I was just just amazed at what's going on, what I'm, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm witnessing. And yeah, it's just personalities. That's how I'd kind of differ it to here. And uh, what, was the, what was the camp like? like? Obviously, you spent a lot of time with, with Tim as well. Mm -hmm. How much of your time was as a support to Tim um, versus your own training camp? I was there – well, the whole point of me going there was for sparring. Yep. But I was there also just to, just to spend time with Tim and to add a little bit of different character to the dynamic of um, Igid, Omar and Tim. I um, – yeah – brought something a little bit different and just try to light up the mood. Sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's funny you say that because I was there just before you arrived and all the talk was um, them last few days before you landed was Nikita's coming. Like they were preparing for, <laughs> for a hurricane to hit the house because it had been – obviously it had been very smooth, very calm, very quiet and then they knew that when you come – everything gets thrown into disarray, that you're barred from bathrooms, you're barred from <laughs> bedrooms, you, yeah. Yeah, well, Omar and I were sharing a toilet and first thing in the morning I let off a massive one from the night before and <laughs> he's, he feeds me a lot of food, a lot of, a lot of meat. So every single morning he'd have to really – live the food that he gave me the night before. Well, so he learns a lesson then. He's, <laughs> yeah. got, he's got to watch what he feeds you because yeah. he's got to deal with the never, He never learned a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's disgusting like and I, interesting. I, I was surprised at the stuff that I was producing as well. Like, I'd be sitting there like, oh, this is toxic. <laughs> like, even back here, like I've started eating normally here and not producing the same kind of smell. So I'm just – I'm amazed at what, what was going on. Uh, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. <laughs> now, look, what was um, what was the behind the scenes vibe for the for the actual fight? Timo Ballerina, um, your brother's headlining in Vegas. His head was everywhere. Mm. Well, there was for me there was nervousness. Um, there was, but when I was in the arena, I felt a sense of calmness. There's on fight day, I had like an, a little bit of an uneasy feeling, and. Yeah, the, the day kind of just like flew past. Usually a fight day takes, it feels long and you're just waiting for the moment when you have to leave. But for me, I feel like the day just flew past. I looked up on my watch and it was already like one o'clock. I was like, whoa, what happened there? But yeah, it was, it was a tense, tense night in the, in the stadium. The atmosphere was, was electric. Yeah. Like I remember looking around and I could barely see a spare seat. It was just insane. A lot of Mexican fans, a lot of a lot of people just going at it. Where were, were you in the arena for the Roly Pitbull fight? Yeah, yeah, I was. What did oh, you think of I that one? I was kicked out of the dressing rooms, <laughs> but yeah, I. Just, is that because you were bombing the toilet, or is it? <laughs> I made sure to, to bomb it beforehand. <laughs> um, yeah, I was there for the Pitbull Roly fights. 
Crazy. It was nuts, wasn't <laughs> Crazy. it? Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I loved that atmosphere. It was yeah, amazing. Rolly was look, looking like he was on ice skates half the, half the flight. Yeah, and I, I thought it was a great fight. Mm. Um, how was how was how did you feel after the fight? I was during the fight. I remember, as soon as the cut happens, I was feeling. I just felt like, oh shit, this isn't good. Start of the fight, this happened. See how much blood was coming out. But then during the rest of the fight, I, just, I don't know, I felt comfortable. Like Tim, I felt Tim was controlling the fight. Mm -hmm. He was landing the more devastating shots, the more effective punches. And I just kept telling myself, repeating these words, you're a, fu you're a warrior. <laughs> you're an absolute warrior, Tim. Kind of like telepathically trying to communicate with him. And yeah, the sense of pride I have of having a brother like that who would endure so much um, so much hardship and just keep pushing through it's it's amazing did you did you get annoyed at all because he's almost trying to take your moniker of the butcher you're the <laughs> one who's meant to love the blood I was jealous yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. Was jealous. I, I know that we always talk about when when you bleed it's like that's when you switched on and you love blood you know but at, at the end of the fight he cut his gloves and he licked it and I was like fuck yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> You did oh. it for me. <laughs> That's good. So the butcher runs in the family then. Yeah. Um, now look, uh, getting back from Vegas. When when did you arrive back? Last Tuesday, I think. Yeah. And and straight back in the camp, straight back. Well, I had one day rest, trying um, try and rebalance myself with the new new climate again. But you know, I didn't really feel any jet lag. I was pretty good with um, just adapting to the new place again, and, and yeah. Started started a little bit light, but now we're in full force. So he's licked the glove in the ring. You absolutely love that. But it was obviously also a bit of a sombre moment for um, for the family, for the team. First time experiencing a loss. Um, how, how did the following hours, following days go um, post-fight? Directly after the fight, or actually before the announcement actually happened, I was... I went to my mom and I said, yes, we got this. Went to, my, went to Omar, like, yes, we got this. This is, it's in the bag. Um, so the moment when I heard split decision, I instantly just felt my heart drop. And I was like, that's it. They, they, took, it, they took it away from us. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he's, Tim took the defeat well. He's, he was obviously devastated straight afterwards, but... He um yeah he owned it. You can't live in the past. You have to always move forward and live in the present. The moment that we went we went afterwards to go get uh, some some sandwiches, and could see him laughing. His friends are making fun of him. Yeah, you got a loss. <laughs> him laughing about it. <laughs> That's good to have mates like that. Yeah, they're uh, just just real. Yeah, he um. And and how was he overall? He seemed to recover quite Look, he, well. He wasn't hurt. Yeah. That's the main thing. He wasn't hurt. He's – everything still was executed pretty well and just a shame how unlucky the situation it was. Everything was so perfect leading up to it, but it kind of makes you think it was a destiny – was it like written in the stars for this to be a loss? But, Yeah. Yeah, I, look, I, I tend to agree. He, he looks to, um, but he, he does. He looks to have recovered well. He looks healthy. He's on holidays, obviously, mm -hmm. at the moment. Yeah, he sent but, me a photo of him being in like a ramen bar oh. yesterday. So <laughs> he's eating well. So he's happy. He's back shadow boxing. He's, mm -hmm. he's the cuts healed. He, he, looks, he looks healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, when's, he, when's he due back? I have no I idea. Know. Don't know. I didn't get told anything. That's all right. You've got one thing to focus on now anyway, <laughs> yeah. right? I've got an Italian to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of Italian, let's talk food. Let's talk <laughs> food because um, I love Italian food, but I also know that you're like a an absolute food nut. You, you experiment a lot with your food. Um, I want to get from you the good, the bad, and the ugly. What's, what's the best dish you've created what's the worst and what was just downright disgusting i wouldn't say the best dish right now but the thing that pops up into mind was like a recent discovery when i cook steak i'm gonna start always cooking now pineapple 
grilling a pineapple with it. Yeah. When you pair a steak and the and the and a grilled pineapple, the balance of those two flavors, it's like an orgasm. <laughs> it takes you to a new world. Like I remember, like trying for the first time, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> so we started doing it in America, in Vegas. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's it's, it's a must now. Yeah. Right. Uh I might be eating steak and pineapple four times a day. It's the best, honestly. <laughs> um, the worst. <laughs> mm. I haven't made that much bad stuff, but still the, the worst stuff I've probably put in my mouth is definitely the raw organs. Raw organs. They're putrid. So what led you to do the raw organs? Um, none of that liver king shit. I don't, I don't like him. I just want to put that out there i did it for the health benefits there's a lot of vitamins in it and it's just a very beneficial food i still eat organs but i eat them in like a tablet form okay like I, have a, I have a sponsor that um gives gives me liver heart kidney and spleen tablets and that's just yeah part of my diet now yeah right but the raw stuff it's just like it's nasty yeah, what what was the worst? What? Liver. Liver? Yeah, liver is definitely the worst for me. I don't know, some people eat it, some people like to cook it. I, I don't understand it. Testicle, testicle is also a weird one because it doesn't have like a strong taste, but it has like a, you when you start chewing it, you start thinking, I don't know if I'm meant to be eating this or not, like this, this doesn't seem right. <laughs> And then when you swallow it, and you have like a little bit of a gag. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound right either, does it? Yeah, what sort? Of, what sort of testicles are we talking? Bull testicles, <laughs> big yeah. ones. Uh, yeah, massive ones. They're like oh, shit. This big. If you can see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my and god! Eat, they actually look like scallops. So they're like a very like spongy. Yeah, right. The inside, but the outer the outer membrane, it's impossible to chew. So you'd be chewing it. And it's just like it's just like rubber. So then you have to swallow, and the whole thing kind of. If you, if you cut it too big of a piece, you, you get stuck in your throat, and then you're like <laughs> you're gagging even worse. <laughs> I don't I don't want to dive too far into that. There's, <laughs> there's some things I could have said. I'll, I'll stay clear of it. But oh yeah, um, you're an interesting. Adding, adding on to that, sorry. Um, they have like a little salty flavor. So when I when you hear women talking about how semen. Has a bit of a saltiness to it. It's, oh. it's true. <laughs> As I was having it, I was a taste of saltiness. I'm like, damn, oh. <laughs> not lying. Oh, I need a moment. <laughs> I need a moment. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, look, I, I'm glad I asked you about your <laughs> your food preferences because i i know that you you experiment a lot and it, and it really interests me i i feel like one thing that i always think about you is that you're a guy that's living his life even as a the strict disciplined athlete that you have to be as a boxer mm -hmm. you still get to live your life the way you want to live it and what you do with your food your your photography your um your animals everything that you're doing tell us a little bit about your relationship with your dogs Hmm. Yeah, they're my little children. They're my little demons at home. It's funny, the day, I, as soon as I got back from Vegas, I haven't seen them for like a month. I, I was living a life of cleanliness, like cleanliness, no fur, no um, nothing in Vegas. And then the day I come back, Lucifer, who's my husky, decides to step in some poo or some <sighs> shit and then starts jumping all over me. Oh. So then I am dealt with a whole bunch of white fur on my, new, on my nice clean clothes, poo, and saliva all over the place. So I had to basically strip down to my undies, give it to my grandma and say, please, please clean my clothes. Oh, that's a nice welcome back, yeah, isn't it? it? Beautiful it shows welcome back. You I was like, you. yep, I missed you boys. And so you take them everywhere. How'd they survive being away from you for so long? <sighs> I don't know. I, I really feel, felt bad for them because my grandparents can't really take them for walks because one, the husky is a sled dog by yeah. nature and he would like dislocate my grandma's shoulders. So yeah, they had a lot of built up energy. Well, they're lucky that you got yeah. back. The day, the, the first walk that we did, I could just see the happiness in them. They were just running around. We went to like a national park 
and they just didn't know where to go. They're just running around everywhere. What about the um, the photography as well? That's a is that a new passion or is that something that you've had for a while? It was a passion that or like a skill that I wanted to develop right after my fight with um, Ben Horn. I had to like uh, I had uh, like a thing growing in my ear and I had to get it operated on, and I'd be sitting in the hospital just kind of researching about cameras and that's where it all started from. And so, what'd you land on? Because you use you don't use like a normal. I use I've I've gone through like two cameras at the moment. I started off with the Sony. I actually started off more on video, but now I've led more towards photos, and it's always like an ever evolving. Um, kind of ideology in my head. I was I got into a bit more photography to try and increase my videography skills. Yeah. To learn more about composition. But then I started enjoying photography more and I'm kind of like in this like in Because you were creating zone. your own videos and everything too, yeah. weren't you? Yeah, I was. But it's also hard to be yet to be your own producer. So you want you need your own cameraman. But being your own cameraman and then also like training as well. It would become too distracting, so yeah. photography is a little bit easier to manage that. So it can be just a little bit of a part time. Yeah, I still prefer not to take not for people not to take photos of me. I prefer to be my own photographer. Yeah, and with videos, it's a little bit different. You have to kind of be the subject yourself, mm. and I don't really like looking at my head in <laughs> post production. Neither do I. I. Just, <laughs> That's why I never watch this back. Yeah. <laughs> Um, now, obviously, you're very different to your brother in that sense, and I always thought that that um, that Tim was the scarier of the two. You you always seem so nice and friendly, and and easygoing, and Tim's always focused and 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 disciplined, and and he's scary to look at. But you're actually the the uh, the one that everyone should be scared of, right? <laughs> you've you've got some you've got some war stories over the years. Um, tell us a little bit about your your school life. So, yeah, high school was a uh, so, – wait, let me give some context. I went into year seven with a brother that was in year nine. He – oh, year ten, year nine. Yeah, year nine, I think. No, year ten. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> he was doing boxing at the time, so no one would really mess with him. So then I come in as a little cheeky kid who saw an opportunity to – just have fun with any, everything. And with having a big brother that's also a fighter, no one tends to mess with you. And that also gave me more of an opportunity to mess with other people and not have any repercussions. So my early years at school, I was a menace. I got suspended four times. Really? From year seven to eight. No, you keep from year seven to nine. I was nearly kicked out of school. I um, I was a bit of a bully, just because I could, and yeah, not too proud, but I don't regret the stuff that I did. It was all just just be boy being boy. Yeah, it's funny because everyone that I talk to you in the in your family, they will say the same thing: is Nikita's the mischievous one, <laughs> and even all your, your baby photos and that. You look like you're the naughty one in the family. Yeah, also, like, my brother, he – I was, like, his little guinea pig or, like, his little minion where him and his friends would teach me how to do things that they were doing. And I'm just, like, a little kid. I was, like, yeah, I'll do it as well. So they got me into egging people's houses. <laughs> they got me into buying – do you know the, the Easy Way drink or Chat Time? Like yeah. The bubble teas? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we'd buy the bubble teas and we'd spit the, the pearls at people <sighs> and – He'd do it like he'd like buy a drink, but then with my friends, when I brought it into their into their world, we'd buy a whole drink just of pearls, and we'd go to the city and just spit <laughs> spit them at people. That's putrid. <laughs> and that's how we'd entertain ourselves on Saturdays, <laughs> and then finish the night off with egging people's houses. <laughs> that, that was just kind of the things I used to do. I don't know weekend, how much of this week, we can week, keep. Week, week, <laughs> We'll, we'll have to check this one in, in, in post. We'll, yeah, we'll I, got, I got kicked out of a lot of shopping centres because we'd stand at the top of like where there's um, – where you can see in between each of the levels, like a little um, – and just, just shoot at people from different levels. 
And they can't really do anything because we're like two levels above. You wouldn't know where it's I'm coming just from. laughing at them. <laughs> yeah. you, you definitely were a mischievous kid then. <laughs> Absolutely. No regrets though. No regrets. No regrets. No regrets. I hope my child does the same stuff. That's what <laughs> well, I well, that'll be your karma. So your karma will end up coming back to you. No, but I hope they do the exact same stuff. I hope that I have to, I have to deal with this, <laughs> these little things. What if they're doing it to you though? Deal I'll do it, it back. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> do it back. <laughs> Um, so tell us a little bit about about some of your your sparring stories, some of your your war stories with your brother. Because when we had Tim on here, Tim shared a great story about mm-hmm. you getting the better of him, and then him getting his redemption. I want to hear your side of the story about what happened and and how it felt the first time to get that one over him. Uh, so yeah, the first time we, we sparred, he's already done six rounds, and I'm coming in fresh. And I basically got him, this was like, what the, I think maybe the first week of him preparing for Lubin. And I just felt very sharp on the day. Like I surprised myself with what I was doing. And I got him with a lot of, lot of clean shots. But then I didn't think too much about it because I, the next day, my uncle tells me, you're sparring again on Thursday but you're going first this time. And I knew that Tim requested it. I, I just knew it. I was like, far out. <laughs> I'm screwed now. And there was just like a whole nervousness for the next next day. I was like, God damn, I gotta, gotta go and fresh Tim. And he basically came out and messed me up. Like he, um, it was personal. <laughs> So for that 24 hours, though, did you get the chance to to brag and, and strut your stuff around the no, house? No, because if I brag, you knew that you didn't the, want to... the deeper the, the next battle is going to be, <laughs> the more the, the harder the next beating is going to be. So I kind of just kept it cool. Like, yeah. What did he say to you after the first spa? Um, I don't think we spoke afterwards. I think he was like pissed off about it. <laughs> he didn't want to say anything to me. Oh, that's but amazing. then after the second spa, we went and had dinner. We had dinner with like many with a family friend. And he basically comes up to me. Oh, I, he picked me up on the way. And I was like, I don't think we should keep sparring because one of us just keeps getting hurt. <laughs> we, don't have a, we don't have an off switch. I like that about you, though, is that you, that you push, mm. push yourselves to your limit. What's it, like, um, what's it like with that brother dynamic in the gym when – people are coming in for sparring like I've been there for a few times when when sparring's taken place and if you're whether you're watching Tim or Tim's watching you how is it um you know when you start getting into some wars in the gym is there any anything from from either side from the brothers on on how you feel about the opponent that they're sparring with no not really we're we still kind of just go about our own business when we're training we're still focused on ourselves we're Yes, I could, like if, like, if I'm working on the bag whilst he's sparring, I'd be looking over a little bit, but I'd still be just focusing on my stuff. And if he's finished sparring and I'm starting sparring, he'd maybe look a little bit, but then he'd keep doing his own thing. So most of your, most of your training's still done separately, even though he's... Are... Well, we're st- yeah, we're still focused on our own paths. We're, but we're, in a, we're in an industry where you can't, you can't slack off. And we got to you got to stay focused on yourself. It's a very selfish sport, so it's only you. How much of what he does? How much of what Tim does inspires you to to ramp up your training? He's been like an inspiration for me since day one. He's the one that got me into boxing. It wasn't my dad. It was Tim. I started boxing after the first Golden Gloves trip. Back, back when I was like in year seven, I was playing soccer at the time. And I got to witness the, like the, the family dynamic of the gym. And I just wanted to be a part of it. I saw how, how beautiful the whole feeling was and that got me into boxing. And then Tim being a professional, it's kind of what re-sparked my interest back into the sport as well. So I kind of owe everything to him. How'd you fall out of the sport originally? It mm, wasn't that I fell out. It's more that I just kind of distanced myself with it. I had to focus on my studies and finish year 12. Stupidly of me, 
on in year 11, I had my final Australian championships and I didn't tell anyone that at school that I was going for a trip to Perth. So at the exact same week was the first set of our exams. Shit. So I, I got zero in all my exams because of that. And my one of the heads of teachers, he came up to me and said, you really should have told someone because we would have been able to work around things. But now in order for you to not repeat year 11, you have to reach a certain threshold in marks in the next set of exams. So out of embarrassment, I said, boxing is on the side now. I need to focus on school. And from there, I started to improve with my studies. I was always in the lowest classes. So I was surprised that I started improving in the educational side of things. And once I gained a bit of momentum, I just kept going with it. And it led to going to TAFE, led to going to uni. And then after I achieved what I wanted, I said, screw it, I'm back into boxing. Well, I'm glad, I am glad you came back. Is there anything that you, that you regret that you wish you had achieved during that time as an amateur? I, I honestly just wish that I kept with it. I kept with it. I didn't do as much partying. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't regret the things that I experienced in the partying phase of my life because now there is like absolutely no interest in that stuff. There is no interest in going out, drinking. There's, I'm just focused on my career. And, yeah. So with that focus now, you're now coming into a fight against Danilo Criati, um, a multiple-time national amateur champ. He's come across here, he's got a very handy record. He's got some great upsets on his record. Um, how excited are you for this fight and to be back in the ring and for your 2024 debut, really? The fight with Danilo, it's going to be tricky because he's not, he's not a very straightforward person or fighter. He, he does things in awkward ways and he's going to be tricky to try and figure him out. So I don't see it as a very easy fight because he's very elusive and unpredictable. So, yeah, I have to really be on my, my A game to be able to catch him. Well, he's um, he's already headlined a pay per view against Michael Zarafa. He's headlined a No Limit on Fox show, so he's not going to be overawed by the situation either, is he? He's gonna yeah, he, no, he's, he's he's experienced it all, and he seems like I've I've seen interviews of him in the past. He seems like someone that's just confident in himself, and generally just seems like a good guy. Like I have nothing against him, um, and yeah, we're gonna have put on a great show. How do you feel now, like, knowing that, I mean, you're the Australian champion, the super welterweight division is very hot in Australia, you're the Australian champion, you've been headlining your own pay-per-views, you're, you're, you're one of the faces of Australian boxing. Um, how has it been for you to take on that take on that pressure and be thrust straight into the, the limelight the way that you have? <laughs> I don't really think about it. <laughs> easy, easy enough. Yeah, it doesn't really go, get into my head. I just focus on what I'm doing and I don't really listen to outside opinions on anything. What about, because it, it seems like you own the moment though every time. I mean, from your first ring walk, uh, the, the entertainment factor that you naturally possess, like there's guys in this sport that, that really go over the top and go out there to really put themselves out there as entertainers, but you, you seem so natural in your, your entertaining abilities. What are you doing in them moments, your ring walks, the times when you're, um, you know, really showcasing your personality? I appreciate that because all I'm really doing is just being myself and – I'm glad that I'm entertaining as just a human being. I'm not a stale piece of bread. <laughs> well, I can't believe you're dancing. Like half the time you're dancing on the way out to the to, – and that's you just naturally. That's not you. Yeah, just enjoying the moment, <laughs> just just not holding on to anything and just being free because, yeah, once you get into that ring, it's just you and your opponent and – kind of like a little ritual of just like cleansing the mind beforehand not overthinking the moment that's interesting because i heard a rumor that, that you and glenn choreographed some of them dances well the ymca one <laughs> i actually tried to choreograph with the team but no one really listened 
<laughs> I was expecting everyone to do the actual YMCA who, who, dance. Who dropped the ball there? Who who was? Who everyone did. <laughs> everyone did. My granddad was the only one doing it. Oh really? Yeah, I was ashamed. We're we gonna get the footage of that. Yeah, look, the as I was that. as I was coming out the tunnel, look, I'm like looking over at everyone. I'm doing the dance, but no one's doing it. I'm like, guys, come on. We spoke about this. Because that was a big fight too. That was massive. Yeah. That was the bomber, bomber fight. One. Yeah, bomber. How did you enjoy Melbourne? I was expecting there to be better food <laughs> afterwards. I heard that there was a lot of food out there and open late nights, but couldn't find much. Yeah. I managed to find a few spots. I should have. I should have tipped <laughs> yeah, you off to that. Um, but you had you had Tyson Fury ringside for that one. Mm. You had Israel Adesanya. You yeah, had some of combat UFC sports. Players. Yeah, it was, it was royalty it was, there. It was cool. Just yeah. walking through the arena on the way to the onto the fight. I was like, wow. And you busted this, into YMCA. This, this, yeah, this feels like a like a full on main event, like an event like the you see on TV. What can we expect? Um, April twenty fourth, Horton Pavilion. Have we got any any choreographed walkouts? Anything exciting? I've got some, not nothing choreographed, but there's something. There's a few songs kind of playing in my mind. I don't know which one to choose from yet. Um, what what feeling that I want before the fight? But there's a couple couple of them. I think three of them. What do you think you need to do to prepare for Danilo? Um, I feel like physically I'm already prepared. That I've really kind of done the whole foundation. It's more just the the patience and the target practice, the the um, the executing the game plan. Had we only got the news like what last week or something. Yeah, so. yeah. Like when when I was doing the announcements at the at Tim's fight, that's when I actually got confirmation that we're fighting him. So yeah. I didn't even know until then. <laughs> No, again, no one tells me. <laughs> How do you go with executing the game plan too? Because I know I, I believe that your your uncle's one of the smartest men in boxing mm -hmm. that I've ever met, and um, you obviously. How, how does it feel when the the game plan that you step into the ring with actually comes off? Or do you always well, stray he, from it? No, he he. I have yeah full full trust in the way he does things because he. He spends most nights just watching boxing uh, whilst uh, smoking some shisha. So he knows what he's doing. And it's always great when we he kind of goes through his, his game plan and it aligns with the exact same things that you were thinking of introducing. So we are going through it yesterday and everything that he was saying was stuff that I was thinking. So, yeah, it's, a, it's good that our minds are working in, in a similar way. So you're the, one of the most entertaining guys in Australian boxing. What can the fans expect when they turn up on April 24th, Horton Pavilion, Nikita Zoo? Look, I don't think it's going to be a quick fight like I've been hearing a lot of people saying, that it's a full mismatch. I think that Danilo's going to put on a good, good fight and it's going to be a little bit of back and forth. Him... Him running a bit, him moving around elusively like he like he does, and me trying to catch him, and I will catch him eventually, but it all depends on when. I don't think people get enough credit when they take on an awkward fighter like this. I don't think people understand how difficult it actually is to yeah, that's, that's to the get thing. to them. Um, awkward fighters, people who move around in weird ways, do things unconventionally, they're much harder to fight than textbook fighters, the ones that you've you've always kind of seen or you've prepared for during like the amateur days. So even if someone doesn't look that skillful or they don't do things in a particular way that you've seen, then it doesn't mean that they're not difficult to fight. Like, uh, what's his name? Emmanuel Augustus, the guy, drunken, the drunken guy, whatever the nickname is. When he fought Mayweather, he gave Mayweather one of his toughest fights. And that was simply because of the awkwardness I, I believe. Yeah. Well, we saw how awkward Fundora was mm. for for Tim as well. Yeah. Um. And I and I don't think there's enough credit given for for how difficult and how awkward that mm. one was. Same with also Ben Horn. Not the greatest fighter, but awkward. Yeah. Does things in unconventional ways and gave me my my, my toughest fight.
But it was, yeah, and a, a, a great fight, mm. great fight. I think you've been. I, I don't think there's been a bad fight that you've had yet. I feel like every one of your fights is is a fan friendly, entertaining fight. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, look, I, I, I'm I'm really looking forward to to April 24. Mm. I think it'll be a great fight. I've talked about how hot the super welterweight division is is here in Australia at the moment. Um, there's a few names that I want to throw at you, um, and I just want to get your opinion of how you feel about them, how a fight with, mm-hmm. with them would go um, and what's your thoughts on them. So uh, obviously uh, Kyle Mazzutia, one, one of the names tossed around mm-hmm. in the division at the moment, so, yeah, former world ranked. We, was, we were expecting to fight him but he had the, some injury with his ear or something. Um, I think it would be a great fight, one, because his name has been in my head since the amateur days, we were actually meant to face off back, um, actually like after my, sh- like um, after I stopped boxing, I was meant to like have my first fight ag- again with him, but I fell through a sickness and wasn't able to fight. And yeah, it's the fight that's been kind of lingering in my head for a while. And, and how do you think that fight would go between you two? He's more of a textbook fighter. So I, I like the, st- stylistic aspect of it he's um yeah he's hungry he's hungry he's he he wants to fight he's he's dedicated himself to improving and i like the way he goes about things so a fight with him will be enjoyable i think it'll be a great fight too Mm. there's another guy who's um been competing on that world stage he's been at that global sort of level um for a little while Gave Tim a little bit of trouble in their fight. Uh, Wade Ryan from mm. Gunnada. Um, yeah. ha- what do you? Th- yeah. What do you think of him? Uh, I'd quite like to fight a Southpaw. I like the. I've I've only really fought one Southpaw, Mason Smith. Yeah. So I've improved. That was over a lot. quick. I've improved a lot since then as well with fighting Southpaws. So. <laughs> so that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> and he's tough as well. So and he's very tough. Yeah. It would be – there would be a lot of punches thrown. A lot landed. Yeah. Um, we've, got, we've got Brock Jarvis who's looking at coming into the super welterweight division. Mm-hmm. Obviously very decorated fighter in the, in the lower divisions um, coming into the super welterweights. What do you think of Brock Jarvis? Yeah, bring it on. <laughs> bring it on, Brock. How do you see uh, you and him going? Um – Similar to how him and um, Liam Pyro went, but maybe even more devastating. Wow. That's big. Um, another guy that's floating around, just fought for a world title at middleweight, um, but can make the super welterweight division, Michael Zarafa. Zarafa. <laughs> uh, I reckon he should just retire but at this point. Like a... Uh, I don't see any interest in that fight. Well, yeah, well, uh, I'm not sure what he's doing actually at the moment, but I really like your responses on them other ones. That could be your hit list for the year. Could be. The yeah. Nikita Zoo hit list. <laughs> Danilo Criati, Cohen Mazzutia, Wade Ryan and Brock Jarvis. Let's go. Let's get it going. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you guys now. <laughs> no, we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. I, think, I, I really like all of them fights and I love, I love the division. I love what you're doing in the division. I love the entertainment that you're bringing. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really enjoyable to watch. Focus, focus. You're going to blink, champ? You can hear me? Of course. We went in the same. The only thing here that's built different is the points bet app. Check this out. With a faster design and video previews with tips, points bets, new league experience is even better this NRL season. I can't wait to blink again. Yeah, my eyes are burning. Points bet, built different. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website. Um, I, I want to tap into your boxing brain a little bit more again. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, boxing family, you've followed boxing all your life. You're built different. You're, you're very much built different. You're a, you're, a, you're a hell of a character. I want to know how you would build your favourite boxer. Um, so I've got a few attributes here that I'm, I'm going to throw at you. Mm-hmm. You tell me who you would pick um, for, for each of those attributes to build your perfect boxer. So let's start with power. Look, 
you can we can say we can build a boxer, but we can also build a warrior and uh, a battler. I, I like, like to that. I like to think in different ways. Yeah, and I like a little bit of comic book stuff. So yeah, with power, I choose the juggernaut. The juggernaut. Yeah, you know juggernaut. Yeah, the guy that's, with the helmet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's I powerful. Choo- I choose him. That's Nikita Zoo power right there. <laughs> what about speed? Speed. Again, thinking about the warrior stuff. I'd want to choose Achilles. The Tim's Tim brought up Troy before his last fight, and yeah. I started looking a little bit into it. And yeah, I choose speed with Achilles. Yeah, I like that. What about boxing IQ then? You've deviated mm-hmm. from the uh, from the boxers for boxing IQ. You'll have to stick with one. I beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give so, me what you got. Yeah, give me what so you got with boxing IQ. It's also like about like a philosophy in a way. It's like a resilience of the mind. And the strongest minds that I see in the world come from the Buddhist temples, the Shaolin monks. So any sort of Shaolin monk kind of mind, yeah. that's where I think would shine the best. In I like sport. that. I like that. Okay, what about jab? Jab. That's pretty specific. <laughs> 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 jab, jab, jab. Let's go with Mayweather. Mayweather, beautiful jab. Mm. Absolutely beautiful jab. What about the chin? Hardest chin you've the seen? Chin. For your warrior. I'm just thinking of who's never been dropped. Who's never been hurt. Maybe Golovkin. Good chin, chin, very good chin. And he's been in some wars too, Mm. been in, uh, wow, some big opponents. What about heart? Honestly, heart, I choose Tim. Yeah? From the stuff that I saw recently. Yeah. uh, That takes guts and not many people have that kind of stuff. Yeah. Built into their heads where they see all that blood and not phased by it. Yeah, absolutely. What about best defense? To finish off your warrior. Let's go with Achilles as well. Yeah? Yeah. I choose Achilles. Just except, except for the… Yeah. Well, ankle, it doesn't matter yeah. with boxing. Not in boxing. Not in that. boxing, you're safe. <laughs> Man, that's a hell of a warrior. You're definitely built different mm. and so is your your best boxing warrior. Not best boxer, best best boxing best warrior. warrior. Best he's, bo- he's definitely yeah, built different and so are you. Um, look, I, I really appreciate you coming on again. Um, you know, we're, we're looking forward to April 24th. I have no doubt you're going to put on a show. You're the biggest I, – I, I honestly believe you're the best entertainer in Australian boxing, both in the ring and on the way to the ring and in the press conference too. I never know what, what we're going to get from you in the press conference. I love I love the moments of them. You gave us some random answers in this interview, but um, <laughs> I love the ones that you give at the press conference. So I'm looking forward to what the next few weeks hold for us mm-hmm. and glad that you're back in the ring for 2024 and looking forward to what we've got coming. Yeah, it's going to be a great show. Uh, yeah, two, two and a half weeks. And I look forward to the Nikita Zoo hit list as well. <laughs> I love, I love seeing the outcome of that. Mm. All right, thanks. Thank you. Uh, April 24th, we've got the big one coming. Horden Pavilion here in Sydney. Nikita Zoo headlining again, the most entertaining man in Australian boxing. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you follow us on uh, Spotify, Apple, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Do the lot. Follow everything. Listen in. You'll get some great, uh, great, great interviews like this one.